Welcome to this tutorial on Unreal Engine 5.2's newest feature, Substrate. Substrate is an experimental material framework that is scheduled to revolutionize the way that we set up materials inside of Unreal Engine 5. With Substrate, we can create layered materials with different shading models to achieve highly realistic materials that were previously impossible to create with the older material systems. In this video, I will show you guys how to enable Substrate in Unreal Engine 5.2 and guide you through the creation of a very basic Substrate material. I'll also explain the key differences between Substrate and the current material editor, as well as showcase some of the new and exciting materials that we can create using Substrate. Despite being experimental, Substrate is known to have comparable performance costs to the current material system that we have. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in and explore this new future together. Now before we get into the video, if you guys are interested in creating games inside of Unreal Engine 5, I recommend you check out my Unreal Engine 5 multiplayer survival game course, link in the description below, where I show you how to make a complete survival game from start to finish. Inside of Unreal Engine 5, we create things like an inventory system, building system. There's almost over 40 hours of content. I'm still adding more and more lectures. And if you enroll today, you'll get an early access discount. The price of the course will be raised later on. So make sure you guys don't miss out. Check the link in the description below or head over to smartpoly.teachable.com to learn more. All right, so the very first thing that you need to know about Substrate is, well, right now it's experimental. So by default, it's actually not enabled. So you need to go into the project settings. So right now, this is a Unreal Engine 5.2 project. So you need to go to edit project settings and you need to search for substrate. And under the engine rendering, you're gonna see substrate, substrate materials. You have to click this checkbox, okay? Now before I go ahead and click this checkbox, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you currently our current material setup. So if I go to starter content, materials, and open up this, you know, material brick clay new. So if I open that up, you're gonna see that we have, you know, our material node. There's a bunch of stuff that's plugged into it. And pretty much we have our base color, metallic, specular roughness, all of our normal inputs, okay? So I'm gonna leave this open like this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and go to my project settings and search for a substrate. And we're gonna see the differences between a substrate material and, you know, just our regular material. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this checkbox. It's gonna say, you know, it's experimental. Click OK. And then we're gonna to have to restart our project. So we'll go ahead and click restart now. Okay, so it went ahead and restarted. Now if I go ahead and open our brick material clay new, and now you can see that it looks a little bit different in here. I'll put the comparison side by side so you guys can see what it looks like side by side. But as you can see, there's obviously a difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain it. To do that, I'm gonna right click and create a new material. So if you just right click and create a new material and open that up, what you're gonna see now is we have these two different nodes automatically when you create a new material using Substrate in Unreal Engine 5.2. Now I believe Substrate is set to replace our current material system, which basically means that this is going to be the new way that we set up materials. However, if you have older materials, they're gonna be supported, so it's gonna be backwards compatible, so you don't have to worry or stress about having to go in and manually update all of your old materials. Now this is the new substrate material node. Basically we have our output here. So we have things like, you know, world position offset, opacity, refraction, and we have our blend mode down here, which changes, you know, whether or not we want to use things like our opacity and all that stuff. And then what you're gonna see here is we have this new purple node, which is called a slab, and that's hooked up to our front material. Now this is where you actually go ahead and plug in things like your diffuse. So this is like the base color. You know, we have things like roughness, normal. So a lot of these things might look a little bit familiar, at least, you know, diffuse, roughness, and normal, and maybe, you know, emissive color. But then we have a lot more other pins. We have F0, F90, SSS, MFP, just a bunch of different inputs. And I'm not gonna go over every single input. To be completely honest, I still don't know what a lot of these inputs do since there isn't much information on it. But if we could drag off our diffuse albedo, we can do, you know, a normal vector parameter. Let's add a normal vector parameter. This will allow us to change a color. So, you know, we can set a bluish color and it's gonna be really similar to setting up a normal material. So you can have diffuse and you can have a normal map here. 
So I could do something like a texture parameter 2D. And then in here I could choose like a normal map, like cobblestone, normal. So we have like this bluish cobblestone. So setting up materials is pretty much the same other than, you know, you just plug in your diffuse, roughness, normal map, all that stuff. Now the main feature of Substrate is that you can layer materials together. So you can make multiple layered materials that have different shading models. So to demonstrate that, we're going to go ahead and create a layered material using Substrate. So this is going to be our first layer right here. So we have this bluish color. I'm gonna unhook this normal map, and then we're gonna add a roughness value. So add a constant add 0.05 so it'll be pretty shiny and maybe I'll make this you know a darker blue so this will be our first layer I'm also going to add some some subsurface here so if you drag up here there's this node called substrate transmit transmittance to mean free path so I'm going to add that node as well and now this is our first layer and so to blend layer together there's a couple of different nodes and the node that we're going to use is called substrate vertical layer. So there's different operators that allow you to blend certain things. The vertical layer allows you to blend, you know, have a top and bottom layer. The weight layer is basically like blending opacity. So you can have a value to change how much one layer shows on top of another. So this would be like, you know, adding dirt. And then horizontal blend can't remember exactly what the horizontal blend does but but what we're going to use is the substrate vertical layer so this will allow us to have a top and a bottom layer and then we can blend based on the top thickness so now what we're going to do is add another substrate slab so right click you can add a substrate slab and then hook this up for our bottom layer and so for our top layer we have this shiny coat and for our bottom layer we could add another color so we could add a vector vector 3 we could add a constant vector 3 and add a color of say you know a pink color and then now what you're gonna see is we're blending these two layers okay so we have the inner coat which you can see is this you know sort of purple color and then we have this bluish outer color and what you'll notice is when I look at the top, you know, this part, when the light is really bouncing off of this material, you can see the inner pink material. If we look, say, down at this darker part, it's going to show us this darker material. Okay, so we can automatically see how light is reacting to this multi-layer material. Now we can also add things like a normal map. So we have this, you know, random cobblestone normal map that you can get from the starter content. If I hook this up to the normal, now what we can see is we have, you know, sort of this pinkish normal map on the inside. And then on the outside, we have this bluish shiny coat. Okay. Now you can add a thickness value. So if you drag up here and do a constant, we can basically determine how thick should this top coat be. So right now you can just see it's shiny. We can't really see any of this bluish top coat. So if I add, you know, 0 0.1, we're gonna see that now we can see the entire blue top coat. So if I do a lower value than that, say 0 0.01, we can see both the top bluish coat and then this bottom pink layer, okay? So those are just sort of the basics of you know, substrate, and there's a lot more different node inputs, and you can essentially layer multiple materials onto each other. Now, I've gone ahead and done this in another project, and so here's an example of basically what you can do having, you know, more than two layers. So this is a three-layer material, and basically I tried to recreate the opal material that we saw on that truck demo, and basically this has essentially three different layers. So this is the first layer right here, which is the bottom layer. So if I go ahead and take this and hook this up to the output, you can see what the bottom layer looks like, okay? So it's just this bluish layer. And we could even change the color to say pink. You know, why not? So this is the bottom layer. And then, then we have the bottom layer being blended with this middle layer. And then this is the final top coating layer. So let's see what the 
bottom layer and middle layer look like blended together. So if we take this and plug this in together. You can see we have this bottom layer, which is this pinkish color. And then we have this top layer, which really isn't much. It's adding in these little you know, refractions. And then we take this and finally plug all three layers together. And we get this sort of smooth polish all the way around, okay? So we have this smooth black polish all the way around. We're combining our pink color plus our you know normal map that adds this little refraction and this weird little shiny pattern in the inside. And then we finally have our outer coating, which is this nice black shiny color. So maybe I'll change this back to our nice little bluish color. And basically out here we can see what it looks like. So yeah, I tried recreating the opal material, but I didn't have the normal map or the the exact you know pattern down. And also I couldn't find all the exact nodes that they used because they used a couple of nodes that I couldn't find. So here's another example of a substrate material. So this one is using this thin film. This is one of the ones that they showed off. And so I tried to recreate it here, but I think it's actually supposed to be a little bit more transparent than this. And then this material over here is the fuzz material that they showed off. So this one is actually pretty cool. You have, you know, the blending of the darker layer. So yeah, those are just some of the different examples of different materials that you can create using Substrate. Uh, like I mentioned, Substrate is set to replace our current material system, but you don't have to worry because all of the older materials are automatically converted. You can see we have this substrate legacy conversion and you can set the shading model to the default lit. So this is like, you know, in the settings where you set the different, you know, unlit, two-sided foliage or whatnot. And you have your base color, specular, metallic, all of the old settings that you would. So it'll automatically convert your old materials to the new substrate material system. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I just wanted to showcase how you guys can start playing around with substrate, how you can create layered materials. I'm by no means a you know material expert, so I'm really excited to see what other people create. And hopefully sooner or later, they'll release some sort of documentation or at least examples on you know different surfaces and different materials that you can create. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.